was shot on film, on 6-9 film, uh, a, a Fuji rangefinder. And um, the weather was very changeable. I shot a lot of negatives and the resulting image is actually an amalgam of probably eight different images. So it is photoshopped. So yes, it, it is still in essence a documentary image, but sometimes the trees look better in one image, the sky looked better in another. And, you know, I moved certain people. Um, I could choose what, what actions to, to have people doing. Yeah. So it wasn't until I got the negatives back that I noticed a whole bunch of things going on further back um, with people doing all sorts of performance pieces, you know, balancing on logs, balancing on tyres held upwards. And, uh, you know, for the kids from the two schools, mainly Indigenous kids, this would have been their playground. What was happening in photography at the time is the, the it, you know, word got out that there was the um, Australian Port, the National Portrait Gallery was holding the, the first um, National Photographic Portrait Prize in Canberra. And I thought, okay, I, I want to find someone, a, a person to photograph for this. And after a week or two, I woke up one morning with the idea, almost fully formed, of photographing the people of Wilcannia scattered in the dry riverbed. Because at that point in time, it had been dry like that um, along the length of the Darling past Wilcannia for 10 months. So I phoned three people in Wilcannia and they said, yes, people would love it, people would come to, to the site. And then I phoned um, a, a friend, Maylee Hunt, who was a photographer and a National Art School graduate. And she said she would love to come out with me. Basically, I'm up the three metre ladder. Um, I've got a megaphone just to direct some people. Um, and Maylee's handing me up. Uh, we seem to go through the role very quickly. She's handing me up rolls of film and also doing continual exposure meters. The intention of the photograph was, was most definitely to highlight the, the tragedy that was happening on the Darling. I grew up on a, a sh two sheep stations out of Wilcannia. Yeah, I mean, when I was and from when I was born to seven, we were, you know, 120 kilometres from sort of everywhere um, and 80 k's from Wilcannia. As a family, we first realised something was amiss in, I think it was 1994, at my brother's place, um, there was a strip of river where you could see upstream and downstream and there was a mere trickle of water in both directions. I kept going back to a couple of spots just to check out what was happening. And in fact, what happened is the river just got worse. My aim was to, for the image to become a finalist in the inaugural you know, National Photographic Park Portrait Prize in order to you know, publicise the plight of the river. In yeah. 2007, I'd already been working artistically with the river. I guess you realise over the years how kind of close you feel to the river and how much it's, you know, part of your psyche. You know, you, you grow up, I mean, we used to just, we drank from the river, you know, and any tap that was connected was to water was connected to the river. And I mean, we just drank the river water straight out of the tap. We didn't drink, we didn't drink rainwater. Um, so, you know, it's part of your, your psyche, I guess. And to see it, a, a chain of water holes and, and drying up and green and blue-green algae and, um, and to get to understand, I mean, in, you know, before um, we first saw it as a trickle, I sort of grew up sort of assuming we, we were out in the middle of you know, an isolated part of the Darling Barker. You know, there were no major towns. Um, you know, it, it was sort of a pristine landscape and I assumed the river was pristine. But it, it wasn't till later that we realised there was this 
no one down there really realised the massive amounts of water that were being extracted. You talk to any of the Indigenous people like Badger Bates and Wadi Harris and, um, you know, they they lived, they grew up on the river. It, it was, as Badger says, was their supermarket, you know, and they described, you know, their mothers and grandmothers all fishing by the river. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a triple destruction for Aboriginal people, you know, their land, their language, and now the water. The funny thing about the river is, you know, when it's particularly when I was living in Sydney, but still when I'm here in Dubbo, you go out there once and you think, okay, oh, great, I'll go out and photograph the river with this nice brown colour, you know, but then you get there and it's not, it's green or it's clear, you know, occasionally. So it, it's never what you expect. <laughs>